AMD Vega Frontier Edition versus the GTX 1080. Pascal versus Vega in 2019. Now it's been said time and time again that AMD graphics cards age like fine wine. They just get better and better with new driver updates. So that's why I decided to pit the Vega Frontier Edition versus the GTX 1080 in 2019. Now you can get a Vega Founders Edition for about $400 on eBay if you're lucky. And it's about the same story for a GTX 1080. So in that case, a GTX 1080 and Founders Edition should perform fairly similarly. Otherwise, why would you buy the slower one? And then in regards to the graphics cards that I used for these tests, well, there is only one version of the Founders Edition card. There was never aftermarket versions of it. And honestly, it isn't really a gamer GPU, but it costs about the same as a 1080 on a second-hand market now, so why not test them against each other? And then when looking at the version of the GTX 1080 that I used for this video, unfortunately it's not a Founders Edition card, it's actually a Palette Super Jetstream card, which has a really beefy cooler on it, so we do have to keep that into account when looking at the benchmarks. Now before we look at the benchmarks, let's just do a quick breakdown of the system that I tested these two GPUs in. Now I used an Intel 7600K, which is an i5 CPU that's been overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. Now I realize that this may cause a CPU bottleneck in some 1080p situations, but honestly it's the best gaming CPU I have at hand and there's not much that I can do about that. And then the system also has 16 gigs of RAM. And in regards to how I actually tested these graphics cards, I used ultra presets in all of the games at the three most popular resolutions, which is 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Unfortunately, I couldn't do ultra wide resolutions because I don't have an ultra wide monitor. And honestly, this will still give you a good representation of how these graphics cards perform in relation to each other. And then when it comes to the drivers that I used for these tests, I used the latest NVIDIA driver available for the GTX 1080. And then for the Vega, I used the latest gaming drivers that were available for this graphics card at the time of filming this video. And now finally, let's look at the benchmarks. And then after the benchmarks, we'll have a quick discussion about overclocking and look at a couple overclocked benchmarks as well. Now I know that everybody's first response to these benchmarks are going to be, well, he didn't undervolt the Vega GPU and that's why there's such a big performance difference. But the thing is, the reason I didn't include the undervolted performance figures in the main benchmarks was because I was having really weird issues undervolting my graphics card. Now I know that Gamers Nexus did a review on their Founders Edition card where they kind of broke down the steps that they went to get an undervolted, an undervolt stable. And I actually followed those steps to the T, but I couldn't get near the same result that they did, which highlights the fact that the undervolted performance that you're going to get from this graphics card is subject to the silicon lottery. And if you get a bad card, you have a bad card. So I didn't think it was fair to include a result which was going to be subject to silicon lottery. Now I did do a couple of benchmarks while undervolting the graphics card and I actually overclocked the GTX 1080 as well just to kind of have an apples to apples comparison. And honestly, the undervolt didn't make a huge difference. It took me two and a half hours to get a result that was remotely stable on the Vega and it's still crashed in benchmarks occasionally. Now with that brief explanation of the troubles I had undervolting my Vega GPU, it kind of brings me to the end of this video. And honestly, it's not a gaming graphics card. The Vega Founders Edition is a workstation powerhouse and you know if your workflow requires this kind of GPU. And if it doesn't, don't get it for gaming because it's not worth it. Try out a Vega 64 because that may undervolt more stably, but again, the undervolting figures that you see on other people's reviews, you're not necessarily going to get those figures on your own graphics card, so just bear that in mind. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, do like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter for, well, more Dava Does Tech stuff, and until the next video, bye-bye.